Creating fire from particles is a great way to get a lot of detail in your simulations and it's really not that difficult to set up. First, right click in your media pool, go to new fusion composition, hit create, and then you could double click on that to open it. I'm going to jump into one that I already have open by clicking on the fusion tab down at the bottom here. It's kind of nice. We got this P emitter and this P renderer here, and I'm just going to click and drag them right out one and two click and drag the output anywhere on here that connects up. Now I'm going to click and drag this output to media out that connects and we could actually see things. I'm previewing this in the number two viewer. If you don't see it, you could select your media out and press two. So I want a wall of fire, not a ball of fire. Let's fix that by clicking our P emitter, going to region, set this from sphere to rectangle. And for the width, just drags all the way over. For the height, we can make this as high as we want. I don't want it to go too high. I also want to click on this widget here and bring it down to the bottom of the screen. Something like that. And we just have these little pixels. So with P emitter still selected, go to style. From style, change point to blob. Go to size controls. Let's even go further than we could drag. Let's try two. All right, that looks pretty good. Also size over life is gonna be important. I'm gonna click a point here, and now we got a third point. And I'm gonna take this one and drag it down. If I hold down Alt as I drag, I could constrain it. Alt, drag that down there. And I'm gonna select this middle one and press S to smooth that out. And click on this end point. Maybe give it a little bit of oh, fall off like that. This one here, bring this up, something like that. And bring this over. Let's click on the controls tab expand velocity, give it a little bit of velocity. A little bit goes a long way here. And let's change the angle it's going up. It looks like 90 degrees, we'll do that. Doing a quick play, it looks like things are working. Now let's add a little bit of variance to the velocity, 0.01. And you can see things are moving at slightly different speeds here. We could use a lot more particles. Let's set this number from 10 to 100. Now I wanna come back up here and click on the style tab and expand color controls. We wanna adjust color over life controls, so let's expand that. Click in here to add a point, drop down this arrow to make it easier to select colors. Click in here to add a third point. Let's make this yellow. Setting up my color something like this works well. Now, I wanna add a turbulence and a flock. Sometimes the simulation gets a little bit rough, so I'm gonna click on particle renderer and I'm gonna to go to subframe accuracy and drag this up to something like three or four. When you do that, things will slow down a bit, but you'll probably get a better particle simulation. And I wanna do this now because if I try and do this after I added the turbulence and the flock, it's gonna impact their settings. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. Shift space bar, P, F, L, P flock. Shift space bar. P, T, U, R, P, Turbulence. And I'll hold down Shift as I hover over here with this selected. Click this one, hold on Shift, drop this on here. I only wanna work on one at a time. So I'm gonna click on P Flock and hit this switch here to turn it off. And let's look at Turbulence. I'm gonna take the Y strength and drag this up here and maybe a little bit more on the X. As I play this, I think the up and down Turbulence looks good, but it needs a little bit more side to side. All right, let's take the X strength, drag it up a little bit more. That seems to work well. Now let's click on our flock, turn it on, and let's take the follow strength and drag this up here. This is gonna make particles kind of bunch together. Okay, that looks all right. I think they might be bunching together a little too much, so I'm gonna take the follow strength and bring it down just a bit here. So I do like the bunching up together now a little bit more, but I think we're losing some of the benefit of the turbulence now. So let's go back to turbulence and I'm gonna take the Y strength up a bit and X strength up a bit also. Okay, so now our fire is definitely more dynamic. Now I could come back to P emitter and hit this controls tab up here and see how long it takes for your computer to really start on fire. I'm gonna set this to 200. If you got a really powerful machine, you could try 300 or maybe even 400, but don't say I didn't warn you. And while we're here, let's give some lifespan variance. Our lifespan is 100, maybe we'll give a variance of 30. 
Now what we could do is grab these and make a space here. I'll click on P render, hold down shift space bar and type in V E C T. So vector distortion, I'm gonna click on that and press enter and it drops in into the right spot. So we wanna select the Y channel and set it to blue. Uncheck lock scale X, Y, take scale X, drag it to zero. Take scale Y, let's bring it up. Somewhere around five seems good for this scene. I'm gonna uncheck lock bias and I'm gonna take the Y center bias, drag it all the way up. I'm gonna come back up here, flip channel, hit flip channel for the Y. Now we could make this look a little bit brighter by clicking on our P render and go to this blur 2D, bring this up. So this gives a nice big blur, but we don't want it to be overpowering everything. So let's take the blur blend and drag this back down. And you just find the right balance here. And we also have this glow. Let's bring this glow up. This is gonna make things really bright and just mess around with the blur and the blur blend until you get something that looks good now what we could do is go back to our particle emitter click on style go down here we got these merge controls and these fade controls so in these merge controls we could take this burn in 2d and drag this up does a really nice job of brightening things up and kind of meshing the look together. Just be careful, if you take this number up too high, things are gonna start getting blown out. And I think I'm at that point now, so I'm just gonna undo back. We could add a little bit of size variance here, maybe 0.4 will do. Now let's have the fire animating on. I'm gonna scroll up here, go to region, and let's say about 40. I'm gonna go to the width, and hit the keyframe button. And then I'm gonna go back to the first frame, set this to zero. Okay, so we have the fire transitioning in here, but you'll notice when it's in this very first beginning part, the rectangle is really small, but it's still emitting 200 particles. And I think it's just too much. So let's have it smoothly transition here. I'm finding the little keyframe tick here, going to that. And up here in the controls tab, let's set a keyframe for number 200, go to the first frame, set this to 75. So this looks better now. And one thing that you'll still notice that looks a little bit weird is some of these frames don't get rendered. If anybody in the comments has any ideas what this could be, I don't know if it's just my tired old computer, but when I render this out as an actual video file, it seems to work fine. I don't know why the preview is messed up here. So one other thing I don't like is I don't want to see these particles so well defined at the bottom. Okay, so with particle emitter selected, click on style. And at this bottom here, we expanded this before, but this fade control, let's bring this up. That's a lot smoother of a look there at the bottom. And now that we've got it animating on, let's have it animate off. So choose how long you want this to be. I'm going to make this kind of short, but let's say we've got enough fire at 125. We want it to start going away. So with particle emitter select, scroll up here, go to controls. We've got 200, hit the keyframe button, and then go ahead one frame or so and set this to zero. It's gonna stop emitting particles. So that's our fiery particle effect coming on, going off. And if you wanna take this even a step further, you can add a displace, maybe throw some noise onto that and do all kinds of fun stuff but this is a good starting point for sure for creating this fire effect.